All right, we're back with Becca. How you doing, Becca? Fine. You doing good? Yeah, just fine. I've seen Becca here a few times on the strip, and today she's actually willing to talk to us, and she's going to give us an update on what's been going on in her life. We're going to get back into her childhood a little bit, but first I wanted you to talk to me about um, your typical day here. What's your typical day like? Describe it. Um, get up and whatever time I wake up. Normally it's around in between like 8 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock in the afternoon I wake up. I know it's a broad span, but it just depends because of my narcolepsy if I had gotten any sleep during the day. So I wake up and then um, normally I smoke or take my medication. Now lately I've been taking my, um, my fentanyl patches and um, my uh, narcos from my doctor. And then I'll lay back down for like another 20 minutes or so, give it time to kick in. And I'll get up, get dressed, and um, either go online and try to set up a date. Uh -huh. um, or um, it depends. As every third day, I'll find a date. Yeah. And then the days in between that, for the most part, I just sleep all day. Okay. So if it's one of the days that I'm active and out and about yeah. every third day, I'll find a date. If I can't find one online before seven o'clock at night, yeah. because sometimes like I won't be able to find a date, and they, it, well, I'll be able to find a date, but the guy only wants to pay like thirty bucks or forty bucks. Meanwhile, down the strip, yeah. I can make a guaranteed eight hundred bucks or more a date. So, a date? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Is that why you're staying on the strip now? Yeah. Okay. How many dates do you do a week here on the strip? <clears throat> mm, one or two. One or two. I try every third day. So what do you do with your money? You make $800 or $1,000, $1,600 or whatever. What do you do with that money? Well, my insurance doesn't cover my medication. Okay. So I have to pay for my doctor's appointment. The copay is $100. And then uh, a week's worth of uh, my prescriptions, like 180 if I'm not okay. mistaken. Yeah. Which really isn't that much. But then my rent, where I'm staying now, is uh, $80 or $120 on the weekdays and then $180 on the weekends. So that takes up the majority of my money. I'm looking into getting a weekly. Thank you, Carl. Okay, I don't want to interrupt you though, but this is a new development. You're telling me you don't, you don't do heroin anymore? Well, what are you what doing? That's what I was saying the whole time is I use heroin because I need it. Okay. You know, I need it to function. I can't function without it. Okay. And heroin is better for you than the prescription painkillers, generally speaking, but my connect that I was getting it from is not in town anymore. He moved suddenly. I think he was evading getting arrested or evading the police or whatever. He was getting, they were gonna try to uh, arrest him in because uh, they uh, set they set him up basically. They ha he sold to an under undercover. Uh huh. So he left the state to evade getting arrested or evade police. So. Now, I have no one to get it through, and I, I don't just get dope from anyone. I have yeah. to get it from my people. Like, I'm not, I've been buying it from the same people for 10 years. Yeah. I'm not going to change who I get it from. So since they're not available no more, I can't even get a hold of them. Yeah. I, I, had, I had no other choice but to go to the doctors and get prescribed my medication again. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that you believe that these drugs that uh, regular people are producing are safer than the prescription drugs that are provided to you? Yes, it's been proven. It's been pr Explain that. All the cutters, fillers, and buffers in the medications oh, hold on, that the doctors give you are okay. toxic. Okay. Right? They're not meant for human consumption, but they don't give a fuck. Like, oh. however, all right, hold on. I'll pull that up. I'll pull up exactly what it says on WebMD. Now my phone's not working. You can come back to that later. Can you tell me something else now? Like what? What's the difference and how you feel before you were, when I first interviewed you a few months ago, you were just doing heroin, no medicine, right? Yeah. What's the difference? How are you feeling? Which, between not as, I, I don't know, not as good as I did with the uh, street drugs. Not as good? No, okay. not at all. So, for example, the street drugs, they, um, they're not as physically addictive. They don't cause as bad withdrawals. The withdrawals from uh, medications that are prescribed to you the withdrawals are 10 times worse okay. and they also have more side effects like adverse side effects for example with painkillers when you're pregnant yeah. the baby can be born without um, its brainstem or not will be um, 
developing in your belly with no brainstem. So when it's born, it's born, it's born dead because you can't you can't live without a brainstem. Okay. But with heroin, that's that's not the case. Your baby cannot. Your baby will be born completely healthy, other than the fact it's born physically addicted to or physically dependent on it. Yeah. So that's just one example. Obviously, that's not affecting my mood. I have my brainstem already, but like it, um, that's just one example of how they're different. So now, like with the my brain doesn't create natural serotonin or um, equ equivalent, the uh, natural equivalent of like a normal adult my age, it doesn't uh, produce. So I'm uh, clinically depressed, and the dopamine in my brain that I do have was getting supplemented by the drugs. Okay. So it was making me not clinically depressed anymore. Now I'm back to being depressed and I'm not very, um, I don't know, happy. I lose attention. Like, I can't keep my attention on one thing at a time. I'm very scatterbrained. And it's just, I'm all over the place now. Okay, and before we go on, do you give us permission to use this video on our YouTube channel? Of course. Okay. Um, are you done with the phone? No, I'm pulling up the thing that I was telling you about. Oh, I'm going to ask Google. Hold on. Because I can't find the exact um, article that I'm looking up, looking for, but hold on. Look at the stupid phone. All right, let's, let's move on. Prescription painkillers worse for you than street drugs. Prescription painkillers worse for you and your health. You made your point. That's I did good. not make my point. You kind of did. No, I didn't, though. Okay. Not at all. all it's right. on WebMD. I'm trying to find the specific article from WebMD. Okay. All right. All right, Becca, can we go back to a couple of questions from the last uh, video that I asked you? What questions? Okay, uh, you said you were first molested by the smoke shop owner, right? Yeah, when the you guy that worked there. How old were you? I was, I don't know how old I was. I just know what grade I was in. What grade was that? I was in uh, uh, seventh grade. Okay, so 12 maybe? Yeah. 12, 13. And you went in there. Oh, no, eighth grade. Eighth so we moved grade. here the summer after seventh okay, grade. So, so you went in there for what, to buy some cigarettes? Yeah. And he started, what What happened? Just tell me. Yeah, well, I wanted to buy cigarettes, and the older girls at school had said that they, they go there and he sells them to underage girls, and that he's kind of a pervert. So, like, if, like, and that if we can, um, if I would uh, show him my boobs or, like, anything like that, or wear, like, really sexy clothes or a short skirt or whatever, then he'll probably give me some cigarettes for free. Okay. So I had gone in there, and I changed into this, uh, like, what my mom called this hoochie outfit, yeah. That uh, she, I wasn't allowed to leave the house in, but I wore it underneath my school clothes so she didn't realize it. And I went there and I wore it. And it was like kind of like lingerie, like you know, like those like lingerie that are like schoolgirl outfit or yeah. like a teacher's outfit or whatever. So it was yeah. like one of those that I wore there. And uh, he gave me a carton of cigarettes for free, and uh, or for five bucks, which is nothing. And yeah. then every time I went in there, I like, got a little bit more from him. And he wanted to do a little bit more every time. And then eventually he invited me to go to the back room with him. Yeah. And, but all the older girls at school said, don't go to the back room with you because then he's going to try to have sex with you. Yeah. But I told him that I was a virgin before I went back there. And he said, don't worry, I won't have sex with you then. I'll just um, do it outside. And I didn't understand what he meant. Yeah. So we uh, went to the back and he put his uh, penis in between my legs and fucked my legs. Okay. That's what he meant by outside. And he, how long did that last? I don't know, a few years. A few years? And then you weren't molested after that? Not that I remember. Okay. Did you like boys during that time when he was molesting you? No. Never? No. Did you like boys before that? No. Oh, you didn't? No. So are you a lesbian? I guess you could say that. Like, I've only been with two girls. You've only been with two girls. And a lot of men, though. Yeah, but I don't like being with men. I'm only with men for money. Okay. When you were with that guy, is that the first time you realized that you could use your body to make money? Well, I like, no, like I always knew that because like prostitutes, everyone knows what a prostitute is, and like I just didn't know how easy it was. So after that experience, you realized how easy it was, and then from then, when did you transition into working on the streets? Um, I uh, had just gotten out of jail, and I had nowhere to go because I refused to go to my mother's house. How old were you? I was like 19 okay. or 20. I uh, got, I was staying with my friend and he, me and him had got into an argument and we were close down by Boulder Highway and uh, I had thrown my phone out of his car and my phone broke and I told him just to leave me there. Yeah. And he didn't want to leave me there. He came back for me like 10 times but I wouldn't get out of his, uh, back into his car. Yeah. So he couldn't force me to, so he uh, ended up having to leave me there. 
and then I stuck stranded down there for like two weeks. Yeah. And uh, when I would be walking around trying to like find people that had drugs and whatever, yeah. people that would smoke me out or someone that would give me a ride home. And then eventually, like, uh, really had noticed that all these cars keep on pulling over and asking me how much, and I didn't know what they were talking about, how much for what. Yeah. You know, and then this one dude pulled up and he's like, I got no money, I just got drugs, you need a ride? Uh, they sure, so I got in his car because I, 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 I wanted to smoke, I didn't need, I didn't need no money. Yeah. I just wanted to ride home and he asked me if I wanted to ride and he told me he had drugs. So I was like, perfect, hey, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. You know, so I got in the car with him and then realized that he wanted sexual favors for this ride and for yeah. drugs. Yeah. So I let him smoke with me and then I uh, brought him home to my mom's house and I told him he could have sex with my mom. And uh, I don't know if they did or not, but he was in my, in my mom's room for an awfully long time for him not mm -hmm. to have had uh, yeah. sexual relations with my mom. Uh, I forgot my soda up there. Anyway, oh, no, I didn't. you want this one? No, that's right, I forgot I had this uh, one. On that hey, subject, you know. I've talked to your mom a couple of times. She's called me and she asked me to relay some information to you. He knows you're walking back at the house anytime oh, you want. Oh, fuck that bitch. I don't give a fuck. Okay. Elaborate. Why not? Because she's fucking, she's in denial. She believes that she really didn't get me hooked on drugs. And she really believes that she got on drugs because the car accident and the doctors cut her off her pain meds. That's not how she got on drugs. She got on drugs because I wanted to have a house party and she asked me to go get her dope. Yeah. Yeah, you went over that story before. Now, she's really sorry for what she's done to you. but And you told me earlier that you forgive her. I don't blame her, but I can't live with her. Yeah, she, it's not because I blame her. It's because she can't. Except the fact that that's what happened. She's she wants really, to try to yeah. get it, like drill it into my head that she didn't give me that first hit, but she did. She, okay. And that's the facts of the that's the matter of fact that she did it, and that's something else we could do. There's nothing we could do to change it either. Yeah. And her, her beating me in the head with that nonsense that she didn't fucking got, get me hooked on heroin, yeah. and that she only started heroin weeks after the car accident, almost a year after the car accident. That's a bunch of baloney. She was on heroin almost a year and a half before the car accident. Okay, that's the past, right? Now she went on to school, she got her master's, right? It was all on drugs. Dr okay, she got her master's, she, what is it? she became a teacher. All on drugs. Okay, but she still did it. Do you think you can do something like that in the future? If I was back on drugs. If you're back on drugs. If I was back on drugs. Okay. She turned her life around, and she's worried that you're staying in these sleazy motels, like you said, sleeping all day, Guys coming in there, and you said yourself that you've been raped multiple times, right? Yeah, but not here. Okay. How many times do you think you've been raped? Be honest. Every single day for like five years almost. Okay. I was either getting sexually assaulted or raped. Okay. And it was because of my narcolepsy, I fall asleep. Like, the second I get comfortable, I fall asleep everywhere I go. Yeah. Like, it could be in a public restroom, it could be on a couch, it could like, at home, it could be on yeah. their bed, it could be on the toilet in my house, it could be a toilet at your house, anywhere. School, but. Uh, bus stop at school. I used to fall asleep all the time. Yeah. We never knew why until recently. Okay. Like, I, I, the second I get comfortable, I fall asleep. You've seen it firsthand. Like earlier, I fell asleep when we yeah. were first trying to do the interview. If you're at a safe place, your mom's there, and she's allowing you to use there and sleep there, you won't be raped. You'll be safe. Correct. I know transportation. To where? To work. To work here. To work anywhere. You want to work on the streets, though, right? When you live with your mom. If you yeah. live with your mom, okay. She's okay with that, you go. But I have no transportation. How do I get there? I fly? The closest bus stop from my mom's house is two miles. I'm not walking two miles. Okay, so that's the reason you're not gonna go to your mom's house. No, you know. but even if I did have, if I had proper transportation, that was my transportation, and I could leave her house whenever I wanted to. Yeah. Then yeah, I would probably go there, but it's not like that. It's locked down. I can't leave in the middle of the night. I can't go in the middle of the night. I can't come in the middle of the night. I have to be there within a certain time frame, and then I have to leave at a certain time frame, and that's not good enough. But we talked about this together, remember? I, she said that you said you only need to go work twice a week, right? To make a couple grand. And that's enough money for what you need to survive, right? Yes, but you're, you're not understanding me. Is that she wants me to come and go in uh, times where I can't come and go because I'm at work. Like, she's not reasonable. She wants me to leave at 8 o'clock in the morning okay. and to come back at 6 o'clock at night. I don't even start working until like 1 o'clock in the morning most of the time. Yeah. So there's no way you can go back to your mom's house then? No. The only reason I'm staying at Sleazy Motels is because it's the only place I will accept my ID. I just gotta go get a new ID and then I would stay in the fucking penthouse suite if I wanted to. Okay. You have that much money? Yeah. Okay. So I'd be making way more if I had a fucking suite at one of these hotels. So what's stopping you from getting your uh, ID? Nothing. I just haven't gotten down there. 
Where? To the DMV? To the DMV. Oh, why not? Because I just haven't gotten down there. Okay. Is that because you're using all the time? No. No? Okay. I'm busy. You're busy? Yeah. Doing what? Trying to track down the people that fucking that robbed my homeboy a couple weeks ago, for example. My homeboy got robbed for everything he had. Someone broke into his house and the police won't help. So uh, me and him have been tracking them down. And like I took um, the last week off from helping him because I just was like exhausted trying to do like trying to do police work type shit. Yeah. But um, now we pretty much know who took it. We found the house that has all his property in it. Yeah. All we have to do now is figure out how to get stuff out. But like just stuff like that, like I, I just am doing too much. Like I do, I do, okay. I'm busy. I have stuff to do. When you're this busy, do you ever think about your daughter? No, I never think about my daughter. Okay. Um, our viewers would want to know why you don't think about your daughter. I don't want to be in her life. Can you explain why? Because I'm not what's best for her. Okay. Do you think one day you can be what's no. best for her? No. Why not? I don't want to be. You don't want to be? Because you want to be on heroin forever. No, because it's not right for a kid to be in their life and then not, and then be back in their life and then not. That's not right. Okay. Do you think there's anyone that loves you? What? Anyone, do you think anyone loves you? No. No? Your mom says she dearly loves you. No, my mom's out of her goddamn mind. Why don't you want to give her a chance? Because she already had a chance. Which was when? Uh, I don't know. How many times do you have to let someone hurt you before you realize that they're no good for you? Do you think she deserves to be forgiven? No, not anymore. No? Do you miss? As it is, like, she's on a tight like, she's on a tight rope. If she fucks up one more time, I'm never talking to her again. You're not talking to her again? You talked to her earlier today? No, I said if she fucks up one more time, I'm never talking to her again. What would she, what would she have to do to F up one more time? I don't know, fuck one of my exes again? Or... Um, I think she's beyond that stage, keep my, Becca. Keep, but she just did it recently to be on that stage. She only did it like a year ago. Okay. <clears throat> you never had a teenage crush? When you were little, before the molestation. On oh, my teacher? No, on like other boys. No, no boys. How about um, celebrities? Do you ever have a teenage? I'm Selena Gomez. Okay, when you're a little girl. Yeah. You're a lesbian, you think? Have you dated anybody? They're except scare me. Except you're okay. They're scary. Why is that? They're always mean to me. Huh? They're always mean to me. They're mean to you. You think you ever be in a relationship again? Is there anything you look forward to, Becca? Opening up my Morgellons clinic. All right, let let us hear about your Morgellons clinic. The the Morgellons clinic. I have I have three people that are willing to give me funding, but I need a, they will match whatever my grant is that I qualify for, or another donor. So if I find another donor that will donate as much as I need, basically, then they will match it. So then I'll have four times more, four times as much as the person's donate or go to donate or, or lend me or whatever. Okay. But um, we plan, during in the business plan, it explains how like we're gonna have meal plans available because you have to go on an alkaline diet. That's part of the treatment. Yeah. And also, um, because the alkaline diet is really hard to stick to, and like it's hard to figure out what meals you can make with stuff that's all allowed to be ate in that diet. So we'll have meal plans available. We we'll also have like you know what Adelon is like group. Uh, uh, group therapy or group meetings for people Al-Anon, whose family yes. is in yeah. NA or AA. Yeah. So we'll have like stuff like that, like for families who, people, who who their family members are suffering from Morgellons, so that they can further understand what their loved ones going through. And okay. then we'll also have group therapy for people who have Morgellons, yeah. so that they can see that they're not alone in this, yeah. in in it, and that there's other people that have it, and that they're not just some weirdo that has bugs craw- crawling under their skin. Yeah. What was that? The cat in heat. Yeah, there it goes again. They're either fighting over a piece of ass, or they're, uh, or it's in heat fighting with itself in the reflection of the mirror of the water, or it's or some asshole is dipping it in the water and okay. freaking out. Saw that a couple of weeks ago. Someone was holding the cat by the scruff of his neck, holding it above the water, freaking the cat out. But I think the cat bit him in his sleep or something. He said so. That's why he's torturing the cat. So um, we would have. Uh, a veterinarian clinic because some people's pets are getting it from them. If their cat or dog has the right pH level, their animals can get it as well. Okay. So we'll have a, a, a vet clinic for the animals who their owners believe that have it so that we can evaluate them and if they, we think that they have it, we'll give them a meal plan for their animal or for their dog or cat yeah. to cure them as well. Then we'll give them a sh- special soap and shampoo that I make okay. and um, that should get rid of it for them. So basically, it's going to be 
uh, we'll have individual therapy, group therapy, group therapy, and individual therapy for people who don't have it, but their family members do, and they're trying to further understand what their family members are going through. Uh, we'll also have a full kitchen that has that will offer meal plans for uh, people who are either handicapped and can't cook for themselves, prepare meals on their own, or for people that just don't understand the whole diet thing, yeah. like what they can eat and what they can't. Yeah. And then on top of that, we'll also have, um, I don't know what to call it, like uh, a, uh, not a therapy, but like a group meeting where like other people that go, like if let's say me and you go to the class or the group therapy for people who have it, and then your mother and my mother go to the group therapy for like the, our fam their family members, you know? Yeah. All of us would go. So me and you and your mother and my mother would all go in one, like once a month we'd have like a fam, like I, I'd call it like a family party or whatever, where everyone who goes there to any of the group therapy sessions would be invited to go there and it would just be like a luncheon or something that everyone would go to to mm. meet everyone, see how big the community is that has it or that's suffering from it or that's impacted by it. Okay. So right now I'm working on trying to find either a donor or a lender to uh, give me one more uh, promissory letter or whatever so that I could get these other donors to donate the money that they promised me so that I could open it up. I actually just recently think I might have found office space big enough for it, I just have to uh, get this money now, finalized. How far have you progressed in this from, so far? From what? This this plan you have for the Morgallons. Oh well, well, my 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 um, business plan is done. Okay. I pretty much have found almost the, all the funding I need. I just need to find one more donor. That I need roughly eight hundred thousand dollars in donations. Eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and either donations or a loan so that I could uh, finalize everything and open up the place. Okay. Hey, Becca, we didn't get your uh, email last time or your cash app. Would you like to share it? Yeah, my email address is becarm318 at gmail.com. So that would be B as in boy, E as in echo, C as in camera, A as in asshole, R as in rabbit, M as in monster, 318 at gmail.com. Okay. And your cash app? And then my cash app is dollar sign B as in boy, E as in echo, C as in camera, uh, A, A as in asshole, B as in boy, A as in asshole, B as in boy, B as in boy, I as in igloo, E as in elephant, S as in Sam. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Oh shit, yeah, I gotta go. You gotta, make, you gotta go? Yeah. You got a date? It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, Becca, thank you so much for this interview. Hopefully, you'll make it right with your mom one day. Mm, I won't. I'll start your Morgallons clinic. Anything else to look forward to? No. Nope. Well, thank you for the interview. Yep, thank you.